Hello, my name is Brittany Gaines, and today I will be discussing with you the importance of sign language and why it should be taught in school. Today, I'd like to ask you three questions. <clears throat> Do you believe anyone can learn sign language? Should sign language be taught in the beginning stages of school? And do you think sign language can break down communication barriers? Knowing the answers to these, to these three questions can further help you understand the importance of sign language and why it should be taught in school. What is sign language? According to MedicineNet, Sign language is a language that employs signs made with the hands and other movements, along with the body and gestures. And this language is primarily, primarily used by people who are deaf. So with sign language, you use your hands, facial expressions, and body language to tell how you feel and to say how you feel. Sign language versus foreign languages. So often in school, we take foreign languages and typically they are either Spanish or French. It's never anything like sign language. Why is that? Most kids in high school are required to take a foreign language or are required to take a language for an elective. But not everyone is born able to hear or able to hear well. So why isn't sign part of the curriculum? According to Educate the USA, AS ASL stands for American Sign Language. <clears throat> ASL is a fully developed language and has its own kind of grammar. So with that, its own language, it has its own way of communicating with somebody who is deaf or hard of hearing using the signs gestures and body language. The language is pulled from English language and from the sign language to curate the whole, the whole component of what sign language is. It's also considered as a foreign based language as well. So that being said, why is it not taught in schools? It's already a foreign language in its own. Over the past decade, Quite a few states have already recognized it as a um, foreign language. So, furthermore, schools who have recognized that as a foreign language should have that part of their curriculum for K through 12. It should be required for them to learn from preschool up to high school since some states already see it as being a foreign language. benefits of sign language. So with sign language comes along with pros, such as it can break the communication barriers, it can improve muscle and memory correlation and response, meaning when you sign, you are able to respond right away with your hand movements and gestures. <clears throat> it can increase fine motor skills, which is the muscles in your fingers and hands, the small muscles in your hands. It builds vocabulary. It also increases cognitive skills, improves social skills for children who are hard of hearing or who are deaf. It can have them interact with the hearing population and vice versa. Using the method called co-communication that's also something that would help children, both hearing and non-hearing, to understand how to communicate effectively um, when learning how to sign or learning how to use sign language. And according to the Odyssey 2016, as of 2015, <clears throat> 300, 360 million people worldwide are reported to have a seriously um, hearing impairment. So with that said, sign language is the sixth language used in America. So that's kind of cool knowing that sign is used that often and that frequently, but yet again, it's not taught in schools. 
but it's the most um, used sign in America. One of the most used signs in America. Also, um, it's mandated ASL. Um, it's mandated in schools. ASL can help children at an early age to learn how to sign and act as kids who are deaf or have a hearing impairment. It can increase the social skills and it also can join together populations from hearing and non-hearing and to eliminate that distance and the not knowing of what to do or what to say and those kind of interactions between the two. Communicating with sign language. So with sign language, you have systems, methods that help you prepare how to interact and socialize with people who um, have hearing impairments or who are deaf. So according to Very Well Health 2020, total communication is a method that uses sign language, finger spelling, lip reading, amplification, writing gestures and pictures or um, images to use to communicate. And also with that, with finger spelling, according to NIDCB 2019, that is when you use your fingers to spell out the words of the letter of the word you want to say. So if you want to say the word dog, you would sign out D O G with your finger. And these letters that you sign come from an alphabet that shows you the actual picture with the letter under so you can learn how to teach other people how to use sign language. <clears throat> ASL has different layers and components when it comes to learning it and teaching it. Um, every movement and every sign and gesture has a meaning behind it. And the formation of the gestures and meanings are used for communication. So for example, waving or saying thank you um, or more, these are all signs to use in um, ASL. So a look further of what it may look like for total communication, like I said, you may use gestures with your hands, body language, you can look mad or you sad. Um, and that's also with facial expressions as well. Pointing, um, pointing at words, technology like iPads or talking devices to help um, communicate better. Drawing and writing. Some may argue that sign is not a foreign language. They may argue that it's not effective or that it's not um, or should be part of the curriculum to learn in school. But on the contrary, it's very effective and people around the world use sign. But for some kinds of sign language, there are some. And for example, you total communication, if it's not taught correctly or it's used inconsistently, that can be a disadvantage for the student. Being that if the instructor teaches signs or teaches um, gestures incorrectly or uses the word with the wrong sign, students can have a breakdown of communication and learn it incorrectly and learn how to speak and sign the wrong way. Um, this also will be difficult for kids to connect the dots between signing, finger spelling, and gestures to put it in a grand scheme of how to fluently talk in sign language. <clears throat> also, with total communication, it can be at times a negative component if kids who are, who have hearing impairment, but can still talk and can still read lips, um, it can hinder them from not talking or using the words more while they still sign. And not um, every kid who uses this system has to be deaf or is, has a hearing impairment. Children or people who have autism or 
learn disability through these experiences as well. But the downside of it is that they may become prompt dependent of only eating gestures and signs instead of actually speaking when they can speak and use the sign along with the word. Awareness. So with awareness <clears throat> for the deaf community, according to USU 2019 Communication Service for the Deaf, um, say about one million people in um, uh, speak American Sign Language or AFL. And this is their primary language, so they only use this to talk or communicate. They only use sign language to, to interact with other people. And this is only about 3% of the American population. With awareness, it brings people to connect together, um, regardless of backgrounds or race or um, ethnicity. It teaches sign language. Um, teaching sign language in schools can help you become more diverse and well-rounded with other people and other backgrounds. Putting yourself first, putting yourself in people's shoes who are deaf or um, hard of hearing, you can kind of see the perspective of seeing how it could be challenging for them to hear or to see what's going on or to understand what's happening around them. They may need um, an interpreter, they may need somebody to show them um, the different signs or somebody to help guide them if they're not used to signing or people that don't understand signs that that connection may break down but if you start to teach sign language in schools students can learn how to pick up on basic sign language and to help interact with people who have hearing impairments and also, according to UN.org 2019, September 23rd is International Day of Sign Language. And just like any awareness around the world, it should be brought into schools and it should recognize the deaf community along with the way of how they communicate, how they interact should be taught in schools. <clears throat> There's enough division around the world already. So introducing sign language into the curriculum would benefit both the hearing and the non-hearing community. In conclusion, sign language should be taught in schools at an early age. This can help um, you kind of it can help children learn at an early age how to communicate and learn basic signs. And then as time go on, they can expand their vocabulary and expand their knowledge as they get older and, and go to the next grade. It also breaks the communication barriers between the hearing and non-hearing, pulling those two groups together as one. It teaches you how we are different, but yet we're still alike, that we are still human at the end of the day. So we should all be treated the same way, whether we can hear or have a hard time hearing or whether we are completely deaf. Sign language is a form of communication. Uh, like I said, for example, we learn how to wave at an early age. That can mean hello or can mean bye. That's part of signing. So why are we just eliminating or limiting ourselves to only learn basic signs that we are taught as baby or taught as um, toddlers. When it's a whole vocabulary and a whole world of sign language to learn and to explore within AFL. Um, basic sign language is taught, taught before a child enters school and with sign language it has layers and it has components to create this whole world of communication with using that method we talked about post communication, signs, gestures, writing, uh, finger spelling, that is all part of AFL. When in school, when you learn Spanish or French, you're taught the basics, the colors, the, um, the numbers, the days of the week. <clears throat> Sign language is important and should be given the same kind of right towards 
and other moral languages. They should be treated the same way. <clears throat> any type of language is considered, any type of second language is considered a foreign language. So if you are primarily speaking English and you learn signs, that is a second language. Consider it as being a foreign language as well. So anything you learn secondary is considered a foreign language. And also, signs should be required to be taught through K through 12. Um, it should be added to the, to the curriculum because, like I said, not every child is born able to hear or able to hear well. So why are we not including those children in the second language as well as far as like learning Spanish or learning French? They should have their own system and have hearing and non-hearing brought together to learn together. So, in conclusion, words don't have to be spoken in order to be heard. Sign is expressed through hands, your body, and gesture. And because I can't speak or I can't hear you, doesn't mean I shouldn't be heard. Thank you. Have a good day.